Philip Crother is the international affiliate reporter for the Associated Press, joining us now from Ukraine's capital city of Kiev. Philip, good morning. Thank you for being there for us. Before we get into this, uh, really, U.S. citizens have been asked to leave. What is it like there? Yeah, good morning. Uh, this is a city and a country, of course, that are, that are very, they know uh, tension. Uh, there's been a war with Russian-backed forces in the east, uh, the Donbass region, for eight years now. But despite that, the capital city of Kiev is relatively calm. We're a long way away from that region. It takes a whole day's travel uh, to get there. Maybe the most likely place where there might be a Russian military incursion or even an attempt at invasion of Ukraine. Who knows what will be happening over the next uh, few days, weeks and months, maybe. A little bit more worrying for the inhabitants inhabitants of the capital city. Well, that's the border with Belarus to the north of here, 100 miles away, essentially. That's another area where Russian troops have been amassing over the last few weeks with more to come. Now, there are bomb shelters here in Ukraine, many of them. They've been, exist they've been here for a long time since Soviet times, but relatively recent is an actual Google map access to them. You can find your closest one just in case, and people are increasingly trying to find out which one theirs would be. Add to that that there are civilians here, dozens of them, hundreds in some cases, training now to be able to defend their capital city, getting weapons training, uh, for example, on the outskirts of the city. But still, there are these calls for calm and for the population not to panic from the Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky. It's a little bit tense here, but still there is that strange calm before a potential storm. Of course, we don't know whether there is going to be a Russian incursion or invasion anytime soon. Well, you mentioned those two words that uh, really did set off a lot of concern here uh, in the U.S. and around the world with Ukraine uh, when President Biden mentioned the difference in the response to an incursion versus an invasion. A lot has changed since then, but how do Ukrainians view the United States involvement right now? Well, look, there is gratitude, uh, absolutely. There was, uh, for example, a gathering of people in the square you see here uh, behind me yesterday of Ukrainians thanking those countries who are standing with them, those who are providing weapons, for example, or who've promised to, in the event of an incursion, to at least bring NATO troops, their troops, to Eastern European countries, not to Ukraine itself. Uh, that's the case of the United States as well. Uh, the U.S. has been uh, providing weapons to the Ukrainian military, but will absolutely absolutely not be sending troops uh, inside the country. We know that. Now, there are some very different views on what is going on right now between Ukraine on one side and the United States on the other. I already mentioned that uh, the Ukrainian authorities essentially are trying to get their people to calm down, essentially. They don't want the economy to suffer from all of this uncertainty and the talk of an imminent incursion by Russia. And that talk, in large part, comes from Washington and President Joe Biden. You already heard him last month uh, talking about what would be an imminent invasion or incursion uh, of Ukraine, and he tends to say it again and again. There is a difference of views there between the United States and Ukraine right now. And, and it certainly is tense, but is it too early, do you think? Uh, at least, is this the sentiment in Ukraine to say war? Is that word too strong right now? Would it likely be something of a cyber attack or, or other threat uh, from Russia? Yeah, possible to say right now, and uh, the reason why is because we haven't heard for quite a few days from, well, essentially the man who's going to decide what is going to happen over the next few days and weeks, and that is Russian President Vladimir Putin. He received uh, the reaction from the United States and from NATO to his request for Ukraine never to be allowed inside NATO in the future. That is a request that was completely shut off uh, by the United States in a letter that was uh, sent over to the Russian Foreign Ministry a few days ago. We haven't heard from Vladimir Putin since then. We don't know what he's up to. We don't know what he has planned for those over 100,000 uh, Russian troops amassed on the border with Ukraine, the Russian border, the Belarusian border uh, as well. Uh, so we simply don't know what might happen. Cyber attacks, we should say, you Ukraine is not necessarily very well prepared for. There have been cyber attacks, we believe, from Russia in the past, and they have been largely successful. Now, if there was to be an aerial military campaign there, too, Ukraine is not in a good position to fight Russia or to defend itself. A naval campaign, 
also the same situation. If there was to be a ground war of some sort, which, by the way, is happening already and has been happening for eight years in the Donbass region in the east of Ukraine, well, there the Ukrainian military has had a lot of time to train, has become a lot better, and has been receiving a lot of uh, weapons and ammunition from Western allies, including the United States. So the Ukrainian military considered much better prepared uh, than it was eight years ago. At least on the ground. Philip, thank you so much for joining us from Kiev. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.